Hi, Miss Roxanne here, your paraeducator for Echo Glen. Um, today is English, and we are going to learn about what simple, compound, and complex sentences are. But what we're going to do first is we're going to get a piece of paper and a pencil out. Go ahead and grab that, and please put your name, your the date, and your cottage, and make sure that it's legible so that you can get credit for your homework. They can't read your name. They don't know who to give it to. We're gonna talk about terrorism. We're gonna watch a, a brain pop. Then we're gonna watch a YouTube video. I'm gonna go over some uh, writing mechanics. And then I'm gonna read an article and you're gonna do your assignment from the article. So make sure that you are listening and you are seeing uh, what I'm presenting so that you can do well on your homework. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get going. This is terrorism. And I just have to get back to the movie. Here we go. All right. Dear Tim and Moby, what is terrorism? It's been in the news a lot, and I know it's happening, but what is it? From Joe. That's a really good question. When you listen to the news these days, you hear these words all the time, and you don't always know what they mean. Yeah, I know, I should look things up more too. Anyway, in the most general sense, a terrorist is someone who spreads violence and fear to achieve some kind of political goal. Right, it's actually a really complicated word, and it's not always clear if an act of violence is terrorism or not. But here, let's look at some examples. A terrorist might hijack or forcefully take over a plane to make the government let his friends out of prison. Similarly, you could argue that a bank robber who takes hostages is also a terrorist. Oh, a hostage is someone who is held against their will with a threat of violence against them. A terrorist pretty much always relies on threats of violence, targeted killings, kidnappings, poisonings, hijackings, bombings, or suicide bombings. A suicide bomber is one who is willing to kill himself in order to hurt or kill others with explosives. Yeah, I know. See, in a traditional war, soldiers try to destroy military targets while leaving regular people or civilians alone. But terrorists usually go after civilians. They may target places like commuter trains, restaurants, or apartment buildings. And unlike most soldiers who wear uniforms, terrorists aren't that easy to identify. They try to blend into their surroundings, so it's hard to catch them before they start taking action. Well, it's tricky, Moby. You know, some people might actually consider certain soldiers terrorists, depending on the situation. I mean, some soldiers do go into civilian areas to try to find enemy targets, which can cause fear, confusion, or violence. On the flip side, many organized terrorists consider themselves special soldiers fighting for a common cause. So, I guess it really depends on your point of view. Well, most people would agree that there are a lot more effective and peaceful ways to have your message heard. Terrorism has existed throughout the world for thousands of years. Even the ancient Roman Empire had to deal with it. But today, with advanced weaponry and communications, terrorists are more dangerous than ever. You might be too young to remember what happened on September 11, 2001. A group of people from the international terrorist network, Al-Qaeda, hijacked four huge airliners. One flew into the Pentagon, the government building near Washington, D.C., and two were flown into the World Trade Center in New York City. The jet fuel in the planes caused the fires to rage uncontrollably in the towers, and they both collapsed. The fourth plane was probably intended for another target in Washington, but it crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. 9-11 was a highly planned and coordinated event, and it shook the world. If you want to learn more, you can check out our movie on September 11th. Another terrorist event in recent history was the Oklahoma City bombing. In 1995, several American terrorists worked together to blow up a government office building in Oklahoma. In all, 168 people were killed and more than 800 others were injured. 
Well, there are lots of reasons that terrorists do what they do. Terrorist groups can be based on all sorts of ideals, including the desire to occupy certain lands, the desire for independence from a larger nation, the belief in certain religious or political principles, or the desire to stop certain cultural practices. The thing is, you can't really end terrorism. It's been around forever, and there are always going to be a few jerks around who are willing to kill for some misguided cause. But since terrorism is designed to cause fear, the easiest cure is to not be afraid. When we're scared, we sometimes react before thinking things through. That kind of action can be more harmful than helpful. If you're informed and prepared, you can respond to any situation calmly and intelligently. That's a much better way to act. Read the newspaper, listen to the radio, and watch the news to stay in touch with what's going on around you. Usually, if there's a threat of an attack, the government will let the media know. Another thing to keep in mind is that terrorist attacks are relatively rare. They make the headlines a lot, but you're a lot less likely to get injured in some sort of terrorist attack than, in, say, a car crash. That said, you should talk with your family about how you'll get in touch in the event of an emergency. It's also a good idea to have a ready kit of supplies you might need in case something does happen. You're not scared, are you, Moby? And I'm not scared because I've got you to protect me, right? Oh, ow! You're crushing me! Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at the YouTube video on simple compound and comp in complex sense sentences. I can't talk today. You'll have to forgive me. All right. So we're discussing compound, simple, and complex sentences. We've been discussing clauses, independent clauses. A simple sentence contains one, just one, main clause or independent clause. A complete thought. I am study. This is a simple sentence. One main clause, one complete thought. My friends and I are studying. Even though you have a compound subject here, there is only one complete main clause in this sentence. You can only get one out of there. So it's a simple sentence still. However, in a compound sentence, you can get two or more main clauses out of that sentence. This is a compound sentence with two or more independent clauses or two or more complete thoughts makes it a compound sentence. I am studying so I cannot check my Facebook. I am studying so I cannot check my Facebook page. I am studying complete thought. I cannot check my Facebook page. That is also a complete thought. It can stand alone. Thus, you have a compound sentence. Now we have complex sentences. Complex sentences are complex because you have one main clause, but you also have a dependent clause. You can have one or more dependent clauses to make a complex sentence when joined with the main clause. Since I am not on my Facebook page, that cannot stand alone, not a complete thought, I have more time to study. That can stand alone, that is a main clause. One complete thought combined with a dependent clause makes a complex sentence. I'm Naira Dell, make an A. All right, fabulous. So now we're going to go ahead and read the article and around the world in the related reading area of this. So around the world. Now keep in mind, your assignment is going to come from this article. So make sure that we are listening with our ears and or that our eyes are open and reading along with me. Because at the end, your assignment is to write one simple sentence, one compound sentence, and one complex sentence. So let's read this article. I will remind you about what those sentences are, how they are constructed, and then I'll leave you to doing your sentences. 
around the world. Here are two re regional terrorist groups that you may or may not know. The Irish Republican Army, the IRA. When Ireland gained independence from Great Britain, 1920, Britain held on to six Irish counties with a large population of British settlers. This region is called Northern Ireland. Relations between the two populations were far from friendly. For one thing, most of the settlers belonged to the Protestant Church of England, while most Irish people were Catholic. In 1969, rioting broke out in Northern Ireland, which led to a terrorist organization called the IRA to start launching attacks on British targets in both Ireland and the UK. Their goal was to cause so much damage that the UK, that the UK would abandon Northern Ireland. After three decades of fighting, an agreement was finally worked out in 1998, and the IRA ceased ar armed operations in 2005. ETA, the Basques, a unique ethnic group with their own language and culture, live in northern Spain during the early 1960s when Spain was ruled by a fascist dictator named Francisco Franco. A group called ETA, an anagram meaning Basque homeland and freedom in the Basque language, began operations which usually took the form of targeting, targeted bombings. It declared that Basque territory should be a self-governing independent region. ETA continued to commit violent acts even after Spain became a democracy and the Basque re region received quite a bit of autonomy. Over the past 30 years, it's estimated that they've killed 800 people. ETA still exists, although it is no longer, it no longer enjoys the popular support it once had in its own region. Okay, so remember what a simple sentence is. A simple sentence has one main clause, a complete thought. And your compound sentence has two or more main clauses, so two or more complete thoughts. And then your complex sentence has one or more main clause and one or more dependent clause, one incomplete thought and one complete thought. So you are going to uh, write your teacher one simple sentence, one compound sentence, and one complex sentence. Just remember your writing conventions. Capitalize the beginning of every sentence. Make sure that you capitalize any names if you're referencing anything, and please use your punctuation. And try your best to be legible so that they can read what you're writing. And that's the end of your lesson for today. Good luck.